This is from January 2020, looking toward the latest data, which are April 2023. And jobs growth, or con- sorry, jobs contracted quickly, which we all know that story, basically bottomed out May 2020, started to ascend in the end of 2020, and sort of went to a natural sort of recovery period through 2021 and most of 2022. And then about July 2022, sharp shot, sharp, sharp stop, and sort of flattened seasonally adjusted terms. So not much job growth, only about 24,000 new workers in California over the last eight months. So that's not good. In terms of we need to get that flat line past that dotted line. Uh, we have not there yet today. Mike Dwyer talked about this. That we should be there sometime later this year. I think we thought we would be there sometime or late last year. But because of inflation, because of our trade, because of a slowdown in investment, because of a lot of convolution of what's going on in the Bay Area in tech, and you see this in the headlines, we've seen tech companies starting to shed jobs in relatively large numbers. That's dragging that, that number down. And this number is the total number of people working in California against continued sort of slow hiring in other industries. Now, this is the labor force. So think about the number of people who are available for work in the state of California, at least by the way we measure it. And it's sort of an amount of uh, what we call the current population survey and surveys of payroll data. Uh, California EE kind of shoves that all into one box and kind of pumps out a number for California in terms of the number of people who are available for work or working. That also is not quite right back above where we were in January of 2020 after seasonal adjustments. So we've gone over three years now with a smaller labor force than we started in the pandemic. So if you have trouble hiring, this is one of the reasons that's true. And when I show you the North Bay data in a second, you're going to see why it's actually a little bit worse in our region. This is the current forecast. Uh, using sort of quarterly data starting in 2000, I'm going to show you this. You can see the dips in the hiring in California here. This comes from the California Department of Finance as part of their so-called May revised forecast for the governor's budget. You can see the sibling aspects of it. We went on this amazing sort of bull run in labor markets until right, right at the end or right before the pandemic hit, where we went into a good sharp cut up the ladder. But you can see where on the far right hand side, which hopefully is going to shade, there it is. That's the forecast period. So, down to 2022 forward, a little bit of flattening of that growth, and it's starting to go up 24 to 26. But still not amazing growth. If you look at the trajectory of that sort of in the green shaded area of the black line versus where we were in 2011 to 2020, it's going to be slower growth. Part of that's because we have not seen that labor force come back. It's hard to hire when you can't find workers. Okay, so, that's in California, we have this kind of weird situation, which is true nationally, is that we have employers who still want to hire, regardless of the conditions, but are struggling to find workforce. And part of that's because we've had migration issues, which I'll talk about in a minute in terms of where our population is not. Okay, this is the current forecast that accompanied the governor's budget that they revised. And we think that that's where we're going to see jobs go. And I'm lucky enough that the Department of Finance actually asked me to be part of their regional body. There's something else they get together right as soon as they get ready to push this out and talk about is there anything regionally in California that suggests that our forecast is not correct and this is what we think. Okay, so now let's start looking at the local area. I'm going to try to move through this easy because I try to push a lot of data in these next three slides on to one slide each. This is labor force on the left-hand panel and the number of people working on the right-hand panel that live in these areas. So that's Lake County compared to where we were January 2020. So that number you should think of as the percentage of either people available for work or currently working, which is labor force, versus 2020 after seasonal adjustments, um, or the number of people employed, which is the second panel. So that county showed a pretty good recovery in terms of getting jobs back. And if you live in that county, it's it's marginally more vibrant than pre-pandemic conditions, which is good for a place like that county, which really is more like rural California than suburban California. Mendocino County has gone through a really tough time and continues this tough time, unfortunately. Uh, and you can say Marin County is going through it too to a certain extent, and both of them have been hit by migration issues. People have left these counties for other places, or if they come there, they're not necessarily ready to, to go to work. Napa County, just like after the Great Recession, excuse me, is really kind of the star of the North Bay again. A lot of it because people move from the Bay Area, brought their jobs with them, and landed in Napa because they could come in now, but we guys Napa did a really good job of subtly and directly marketing that in the Bay Area, and that kind of that drew people into Napa. And so we've seen growth in Napa that's been pretty strong. Solano County has been slowly coming up. Solano County is kind of a, a wild mix of Napa, Lake County, and Sonoma County as, as one county. And it's a long county that has effects in by the Sacramento metro area as well as the Four Bay area. It's growing and sort of moving at the same pace as 
let's say California and snow mechanics moving a little bit slower than that, also hit by migration issues, which I'll talk about at the end. And then that is California in contrast. So if you think about the North Bay, we tend to follow the state, historically speaking, with about a three or four on lag. Again, historically speaking, we are basically creeping in our core areas, meaning now the snow and the rain at about the same pace as the state. Uh, but that's mainly driven by what's happening now. Now, in terms of industry change, I'm going to show you this from each county standpoint, and again for California. These are the major industries that we tend to follow as macro economists, but we also think about, again, what's it mean locally in terms of maybe shipping these a little bit to be a little bit more um, aggregated. For example, these are not going to be able to split into hotel versus restaurants. We want to keep playing it all together. This is Lake County. You can see in some cases we've seen growth, so let me, let me look backward. These data are the same data we just saw in terms of the timeline. Think January 2020 is the benchmark. What percentage changed since January 2020 after seasonal adjustments have happened in these industries in terms of bringing people back to work? Okay. Positive above the red dotted line, more growth. No, yeah, still growing or trying to get back while we're pre-pandemic. That's Lake County. You can see a couple of industries. Wholesale's picked up. Manufacturing down a little bit still. Information, which is kind of tech and publishing, has gone down a little bit. Professional services have picked up. So it's kind of a mixed bag in Lake County, but the net is growing. Then the Seattle County, a little bit more mixed. And I tried to show you on the far right hand side, you can see leisure, hospitality, and so called other services. Other services are a wild mix of personal services. There are salons, now salons, fitness centers, tech and shop. On the little parts of uh, construction, for example, in Seattle County, I've got to see some home building there, which is getting a little bit of growth for Seattle County. In terms of Marin County, we've seen some uh, industries contract a little bit. We've seen some pick up, for example, in um, manufacturing. We've seen a little bit of, of give back in terms of what's happened there. Some of that is tech and, and biotech. Uh, construction's pick up. But Marin County, because of that slower growth and mainly because the population dying out, dying out, has not grown as fast. This is Napa County. Up for most of those industries, but not all of them. You can see a couple of those have contracted wholesale retail. A lot of that is around some contraction brick and mortar um, modeling in terms of you don't have as many people on the floor anymore in those retail spaces. And wholesale very much tied to the wine industry in terms of the wine industry is not the back and full in terms of the orders that go out. And that's still down a little bit. The Solano County is, we've seen that pick up, especially on wholesale or transportation across the board. You can see all that sort of picking up. We've seen transportation and logistics. Sonoma County, very similar in terms of Solano County, and then there's California. So where the big pickup has been has been primarily in construction, transportation, logistics, and then in professional and business services. You think about it as region-wide, a lot of that following the state lead. Now, the forecast is the next stop, and it's kind of a similar picture in terms of this is Lake County, a lot of state transportation, logistics, some construction and farm, but I want to Use this as a pause and talk about farming. We are not counting cannabis based jobs yet in farming data for California, believe it or not. So, you know, a lot of people who work in cannabis, depending on how that happens, uh, they, they are not counted, whether they are so called germans, whether they are straight up cultivation owners, none of that is counted. Right? We are still struggling with how to piece that together, which is kind of funny now we're sort of five, six years deep in the experiment of having cannabis as a legal route. Think about that in terms of farm. That farm is sort of classic farming contraction for Lake County. If you add cannabis, it'd be positive. And that's also true for Mendocino County. Uh, the Mendocino County has picked up a little bit in other farming. Marin County is seeing growth across the board, which is good economic development efforts in Marin County. And I believe these are from Marin Economic Forum today. Uh, those continue to bear fruit looking forward. We're still planning out a pandemic, but we're in a good group in, in, in Marin County. Napa County, growth across the board more or less. There's a couple of islands that finance. And in retail and wholesale, the supposition is that that will not come back strong there. I guess some of that will be the detritus that has happened with Silicon Valley Bank uh, and how much that might actually change to the financial, overall financial hiring in places like Napa County. Solano and Sonoma look very similar to each other. You can see for total industry job in the market, this for Sonoma at 3.8% growth. We are expecting more growth in folks over 2030. And I'm sorry if I didn't say this right off the top. This is starting at the end of 2019, which is in essence, where we had the last two crops to the end of 2030. So that's 11 years on, right? That, that span. Not amazing growth, except in one or two areas leisure and hospitality and in transportation or warehousing. There's going to be some mixed bag in terms of manufacturing and construction. 
not a lot of tech, which is information, which is, uh, you can see some of that's actually losing jobs. Uh, we're not seeing that come in, considering these, these forecasts, but I'll let it get some point point here. These forecasts come out of the Department of Finance and Caltrans as part of sort of planning around transportation and what, what spending needs to happen in California. This is a status quo forecast. It doesn't think about local economic development or workforce development activities that could juice a lot of growth otherwise. So this is almost a challenge graph than it is, let's say, a statement of truth. Okay. So that's the labor market picture looking forward. What I want to do now is I want to look at housing. Because housing is one of those markets that, no matter what's going on otherwise, as soon as you hear your neighbor sold their house, your gut starts to turn a little bit. Either because you've got to open a bottle of champagne or because you're sweating the fact that you're going to have to sell all your champagne instead. So here's California in the last year. Okay, now, and like California's in some of the selected areas. Most of, well, the North Bay basically starting to sell moving rain is shown here otherwise. So the last six stones on this graph is the North Bay, or the North Bay County, if you think about that. But you can see almost everyone doesn't fall. So we knew this was going to happen. This is a natural byproduct of high margin rates, price fatigue, slow down in demand, concerns about the future. You name it, you have to roll together. We had to expect some, some loss. But notice that San Francisco, which is the biggest loss, is only about 12 or 13 percent down from one year ago. And everything else is kind of in a single digit loss. Now, if you remember a time in which interest rates had gone up this quickly, and we had that big of a price surge previously, you should have expected a lot of bigger change. I'll show you the, the change since the peak, which is about the same timing for now as one year ago. But this is the three-year run. So if you look back three years, even though we've lost over the last year, we've still seen really good growth in housing prices. Not historic, but pretty good growth, which is providing a little bit of a pie to come back. But like I said before, just like other equity markets, when housing markets start to show a little bit of softening, we all get a stomach ache. Even though we, you know, we also become extremely mild, we forget. We just gain 30%. What I don't want to lose is I don't want to lose that back. Right? How many of y'all know people like that? They all just sweat in the housing market. Nobody raised their hand. Come on out. Serious? Time. That's why since the peak and the one year look very similar to each other. But the reason I'll show you since the peak is because that's how we think about housing prices. We don't think about it on the sort of rolling 12 month basis. We want to know, hey, when I hit the grand slam, how many out did I make out of that? And right? that's what we're concerned about. It's a very myopic view of looking at up many markets, but that's how the housing markets work because when people put existing units up, they're thinking with that mentality. How do I preserve profit off the title? Now, how do I think in the long term about whether or not I want to be in a certain place? It's, it's come out of that very quickly when prices start to fall. Now, this is the current forecast. These data are all come out of Zillow's public, uh, public database, and one can argue that Zillow hasn't basically pushed these data out in a certain way, but it's the most robust public database out there. We tend to see trends following exactly what they push out there in the data. Almost a complete reversal from six months ago in terms of the forecast looking forward four months. So instead of having all negatives across California, now it's basically all positive. But relatively small positive. In other words, the supposition is, is two things are going to happen over the next, let's say, 12 months. One, we're not going to see interest rates either plateau or come back down a little bit. Based on what the Federal Reserve is going to do, that's going to drag mortgage rates down a little bit. And the second piece is that people are going to say, okay, we have waited 18 months. We should get in while the getting is good, especially if we see our neighbor selling their home at what we think is kind of the bottom. Now we're going to start buying now and the supposition will go on another round. So the demand should be there. The supposition is the interest rates will finally give that other juice to demand. And the supply side of the market has not really changed much. So that's helped, in a sense, solidify what could have been 20, 25% reduction if everybody started bringing their homes up all out 2007, 8, 9. That did not happen. And we've not seen an amazing amount of construction. So we have some of our top left need to buy to, to build homes. We all know that. I'll end with this in a little bit. It has not happened yet. Supply conditions are very much dependent upon existing units going up on loss. And commercial real estate, I get these mainly from Newark, but I also look at other places that tend to have specializations in certain pockets of the North Bay. If you look at Smell and Marin, Napa, and San Francisco, the commercial real estate outlook for the North Bay is actually kind of a mixed bag. We don't expect a lot of construction. We see prices kind of maybe creeping up a little bit and vacancy creeping down a little bit, but not by much. And inventory is probably not going to change that much. But in San Francisco, most 
kind of out there expected. One problems in 23, 2023, 2024, in terms of the final round of decision making, in terms of leases coming up, new decisions that have to be made, a lack of construction, and the sort of final stand on work from home. And if you watch commercial real estate markets, what tends to be the two big drivers, don't look at the current inventory, I'm sorry, the current occupancy rate, but look at what are actually cash scans going into buildings. Because it could be a false inventory that says that we're still leasing 75% of the building, but only about 45% of the work are going to go in. So that signal that there might be some long term changes once this has come up, those kind of things are, are sort of deeper levels to watch in terms of forecasting forward. But there are some basic headwinds. We should expect some permanent movements and some final decisions. We shouldn't expect, let's say, uh, any comeback of data. We should expect that if we don't see, you know, especially in downtown San Francisco, a real comeback from workers. There's going to be some other uh, commercial real estate issues in terms of the concentric circles around the utilization of our larger office buildings. Meaning that that one of my place that's been serving that office building for 30 years, can they really survive if occupancy goes back to 45, only to 45 or 50% permanently in that building? Those are some things we should watch for. That's also true here in our downtown to a certain extent. Um, there's a lot of environmental factors. So if you travel down to Union Square, Market Street, uh, there's a lot of concern politically about what's going on in the city as a place to do business, but in being San Francisco. So we're going to see how much that continues to evolve in such a way that that might turn off some building resource or some builders actually going in and investing in a, in a situation in which we don't know what the outcome is going to be politically or socioeconomically. Stakeholders are going to start putting pressure on work and we cut costs going really into a slower period of revenue. We might see that too and have a little bit more work from home. Peace and industrial change has started to slow down. So, industrial was the hot market as we came out of the pandemic. That has plateaued a little bit, at least in the data, and that makes sense. It's kind of almost like housing market you have to expect that. So, that's not going to get that one. But the tailwinds are the leverage is still pretty, pretty conservative out there. We have a lot of these buildings when you have these things, or I'm sorry, you have loans on them. We're at relatively low interest rates for the time being, which is good. It's not means that there won't be this huge fire sale coming because they have to get out of under a relatively high credit or high cost of credit. And office is still a visible but kind of, let's say, small part of the market. It's, we think about those big offices as a big deal, but in terms of actual footprint, it's not as big a deal nationally or in the state wide market as we think. And industrial slowing down is probably a good thing. One thing we were concerned about, especially if you take the quarter or through Napa, is if you know where the airport is in Napa, you take that left, you go on 12 toward 80, you take 80, basically from Everfield, Cordelia, up to Vacaville. There was a lot of push to basically make that into an industrial corridor while the getting was done. That has slowed down and a lot of political pushback in those communities, not to turn that into a warehousing community. So that's actually probably a good thing in terms of keeping that, uh, that piece, if you will, politically. Okay. So when I think about economic development, I kind of think about three things, and, and they're, they are these. Housing, land, and infrastructure, workforce, and economic development, and transportation community folks. This is what makes community development happen. You need these three legs of the stool to make things work. Okay? So if you think about the role of Sonoma State, for example, in this, we basically are in the economic and workforce development piece, but without us here, or let's say, for example, without the correct transportation networks and infrastructure, without the correct housing mix, we will struggle, regardless of the nurses we come out here, to have the land and job here. And as we're going to talk about in just a second, the, the healthcare professions are struggling to hire because, in, in the North Bay, because of the mix of infrastructure change and really these three, three legs of the stool not working in balance. This is the evolution of healthcare jobs for 2026. So if you take the governor's budget and the forecast inside and just strip out the healthcare, this is the evolution of medical offices, labs, and hospitals and the job growth. So that started to slow down. You can see that little bump around the pandemic. This is nursing and residential care jobs. Not that much growth, really, uh, in terms of the percentage of the total number of jobs in California. It kind of somewhat flattened since, let's say, right after the Great Recession. And this is the evolution of public health. So you think of our federally quali qualified health centers and the uh, amount of public health opportunities out there. The growth has continued. The pandemic juiced out a little bit. I still can't figure out why we have that cut at the very end. I forgot to ask them that when I looked at this, sorry, when I looked at this graph. But the supposition is two things. One, growth is slowing down in terms of hiring in California, and it makes you wonder why that's happening. Part of the labor force change. The second is it's just gotten tougher to hire people in, in healthcare. So when I think about that, what are some things to think about? Well, when we think about the change, look at residential nursing. Care. Like, talk about that we're not getting younger, right? Are we going to go into 
every senior facility mode. If, if true, where are we going to find workers? We have now gone beyond the acute care central piece, which was the pandemic. What's that mean later? Are we going to see medical offices and hospitals rise in terms of population change, or will they decline because of population change in terms of growth? And which are the shifts happen when they supply can't find the workers or in demand, but want the workers? One of the nastiest little pieces of economics is trying to figure out either price or quantity. You have to identify what side of the market you're on. You're trying to figure out, and that can also be a nasty little thing in terms of saying, well, what's really driving this in the end? It's got to be, in, in a sense, both. So for the North Bay, here's something to watch. So since 2001, I'm going to show you these data. We think of healthcare just like we think of a utility or we think of public safety. You should be part of our infrastructure. You should have a certain number of healthcare workers per person to feel like we have a robust community. It's one of the legs of that stool. Okay. So 2001, this is the number of healthcare workers across the counties in uh, the North Bay, which are the first six stalls in California and the U.S. is country. So I'm going to see this today. That's what it is in 2022, at least according to uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Okay. That's the number of healthcare workers we have in these six counties per person or per capita. Notice how much more robust the healthcare uh, system we have in these counties versus California on average or the U.S. So we tap that every time we talk. We think of healthcare as a pillar of these communities. Okay? So we want to keep those numbers high. That attracts a higher more network crowd to live here because they have those healthcare facilities. A lot of choice here. If you think about Napa, Sonoma, and Moran, and the breadth and depth of healthcare in those three counties in terms of outpatient surgeries, specialty doctors. Oh my God, it's really hard to find within, let's say, 25 mile radius the same X. That's why. However, if you look at the age of that workforce, so we're going to go from 19 to 24 relatively quickly because it's after 24 that the core, that's right up to 54 years old. Okay, so that's 25 to 54. That's 54 to 65. Okay, so you can see that, generally speaking, that mix of what we think of as the core age of our healthcare workers has not changed much over the last 20 years, but check this out. That's 65 and older. So the 65 and older portion of our healthcare workers, at least again, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, I'm going to get for these six counties combined, not just one, but the six counties combined, being again from a regional standpoint, has tripled. That means that workforce is getting older, and we need to train more to go in on the other side. We need to give a reason and the training for people to pursue those healthcare careers. Or we're going to see that left hand route start to slip. Okay. Why are we seeing some slip? This is the North Bay population forecast over, let's say, towards 2050. This is the latest one. This came out about two months ago from Caltrans as the precursor of what the Department of Finance is going to do when it does its long term projections there and You can see it's kind of flat. The cool thing is, is, if you look at the start of 2019, when down from the pandemic, we're still in that sort of shock period, going to creep up toward 2028, 2029, go back to where we were pre pandemic, and then kind of get up to about one and a half, two percent above where we're in 2019, kind of flatten out forever. Right? Well, think about that. You say, okay, that's good. That's the North Bay you can take Solano County out of. So the projection is that the only reason, let's back up one step. The only reason that population, at least in current forecasting, will be positive toward 2050, which is still super slow growth, right? A flat line for growth is usually not a good thing. North Bay looks like that. Now, California looks like that. Some people are leaving California. They're leaving this area. But we're not really seeing a change in the occupied housing units. So to kind of tie it all back with a bow, if you don't see a change in the number of occupied housing units, but you have fewer people living there, what have you lost? And in fact, what have you gained, which then drives what you're losing? So I don't want to be like a total like Egyptian riddle right at the end of this, but, uh, but we, the doors wide open here instead of us on this one. Come on up. If I heard some old spatter, you know, so you use, you, you use, sorry, lose you. Okay? We think you lose support for schools. So right now, the projection in Sonoma County, for example, is that about 12 or 13 percent fewer K-12 students in public schools for the end of 2020, no, 2032, as a result of the beginning of the progression of that route. So what's it mean? An aging population. That's what drives it. So if you have an aging population that's not replicating, regardless of how often you tend to practice, you all will end up with fewer kids at home. Okay? So that fewer 
kit means a bunch of different support mechanisms that aren't there anymore. There's going to be continued pressure on us in higher education. Right? We, and as presently suggested, we are getting very strategic in the way we're looking at it right in terms of drawing in more students. We're going to have to that way. The environment going to get more and more competitive. So please support this university as much as you can in terms of setting people who are graduate programs and thinking about where your kids go to school. We have concerns over housing demand and sort of the type of housing. So you're going to watch an enormous amount of housing here over the next few years. It's going to be on those two fronts. How many are going to go? And what tenants? Because that has, again, as a part of that three-legged stool, that will then generate the type of workers you get the other infrastructure that's around. Okay. And then finally, the North Bay, in this sense, is not unique in California. Our rural areas are actually contracting faster in these projections, these projections getting older and not seeing as much of migration. Okay. Well, where are the opportunities? So I try to end these with at least something that looks like a, a reflection on the opportunities. So Lake County, I think, can have as much as it the market right now is a total mess. If you know that market, it's been crazy over the last two years. Lake County's kind of teed itself up that for a pretty good move over the next decade in terms of the way it's viewed it. And I think that the lake itself would have a lot of science where Lake County may not bring any other, let's say, frontier science naturally. The lake is there as an asset that they can utilize. I did some work up there five years ago in which I kind of said, look, if you're going to do anything on tap, look at the lake as a scientific laboratory and try to draw the world for it. Bring tourism life sciences. Tourism back there, a really nice green in Marin County. Life sciences is a cemented industry we need to keep there. In Mendocino County, I think we can see more energy and wind and solar as an experimental place. Tourism also is that we have a bigger brand in Mendocino County driving more tourism. In Napa County, there's been some discussion about diversity. Okay, well, what are you going to do? What is riding this high? Is it really good to sort of throw a bumpy wrench in that engine? We will see how that goes, but there are some discussions around the group about whether or not that can become a little bit more industrially diverse. We'll see if that sticks. In the case of Solano County, Solano County is kind of a microcosm or a macrocosm, I should say, of Marin County. That life, life sciences are footprints really big. We heard yesterday that Genentech is going to be back at all in some way, shape, or form as a, as a branded entity, but may come back in some other form. So watch for that transition back to all, but uh, also a life factor. And again, trying to avoid the idea that it should be a huge industrial corridor unless you're actually producing goods somewhere along that corridor and then using industrial analyzes warehouses and transportation. And then here in Sonoma County, I think of energy science, if we can just get something that looks like a new product for mass adoption, we can have a kind of a revolution like we had with telecom and or medical devices we've seen here historically. It's in that industry, I think, is the best shot of a winner having science, entrepreneurism, if you put that as sort of one on becoming workers and manufacturing goods and, and the world can use. We have a lot of talent here to utilize, including what we've got here from Sonoma State. So we should expect the next three years to be relatively slow. We should expect housing to be the big question for the rest of our time on this planet. If your intention is to live here the rest of your time on this planet, that issue is not going to matter. I don't care how many houses you build. At some point along that way, you run into some political issue, or you run into some market issue that more likely to go any further, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, finally, Sonoma State is that vision for jobs, so watch for that. And also watch for how the energy race compels jobs going forward and how the two collide. Folks, thank you so much again for having me, and thank you to the sponsors.